Number 46. Water supplied to a house by a water main has a pressure of 3 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square meter early on a summer day when the neighborhood use is low. The pressure produces a flow of 20 liters per minute through a garden hose. Later in the day, the pressure at the exit of the water main and entrance to the house drops, and a flow of only 8 liters per minute is obtained through the same hose. Letter A. What pressure is now being supplied to the house, assuming resistance is constant? All right. Um, so... We, we have a picture here of, I guess, a water main, all right? So there's a main pipe, and then usually there are branches off of that main pipe that then supply various homes, okay? So what they're telling us, uh, and then also reading further, they also tell us that the main pressure at the entrance of the water main, so up here, that's going to be about 5 times 10 to the 5 newtons. And in the part A, they're telling us that the pressure at the point at which the water main essentially enters the house will be uh, 3 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter, okay? Um, and by the way, if there is a prefer, uh, pressure differential here, that means there is a flow, okay? If all of these homes were, let's say, closed up, right, and there was no flow, then the pr pressure would be static, and it would be the same all over, okay? That should hopefully make sense. Now, we do know that there is some flow because there's a uh, pressure differential. Now, we also know that at the beginning stage here, all right, in the morning, the flow rate is going to be, so I'll label this as Q. Now, these Qs, I know I put them all in red, but uh, they're not necessarily all the same, okay? Uh, since this main pipe supplies various homes, all right, the flow through a single home will be less than the flow through the main pipe because the main pipe supplies many homes. So uh, the flow here from the main, though, into the house, in the first case they told us was going to be, I'll call this Q, I guess, 1, is going to be equal to 20 uh, liters per minute. And now Q2 in the second part in the afternoon, I guess, the Q2 now has dropped and now it's eight uh, liters per minute. And what we want to find is we want to find what's the pressure being supplied to the house. All right. So what do you, so if the pressure was higher in the original case here and we produce this original uh, flow rate, what must the pressure now be, higher or lower, to produce a lower flow rate, do you think, at the point of the house? Well, it should be lower, right? We have that direct relationship, all right, as signified over here in this formula and over here in this one. So we can we can come up with this proportion, right? We've been doing these before. So for letter A, we realize that uh, we'll say the Q initial divided by Q final will be equal to the initial pressure divided by the final pressure. I want to find the final pressure, so let's just solve this thing for P sub F, right? So P sub F will then be equal to uh, P sub I times Q sub F all over Q sub I, right? So all I'm doing is just doing some cross multiplication. I'm just moving the variables across. So this is the formula. Now this is what we need to know. So let's, do we have everything we need? Yeah, we do, right? What's the initial pressure? Well, the initial pressure at the point of the house, right, was 3. 3 times 10 to the fifth. What was the... Um, uh, final flow rate. Well, the final flow rate was 8 liters per minute. Now, since we're creating a proportion, and if you notice the Qs are divided by one another here, it doesn't really matter what units you use for Q. I'm going to save a little time and not do the conversion here, but you could if you wanted to convert it into cubic meters per second, uh, but the units will cancel out, so we're okay. So this is essentially 8 liters per minute, and then divided then by the original Q of 20, 20 liters per minute. These units in here will cancel, just leaving you the units for pressure, which would be in terms of newtons per square meter, a.k.a. Pascal. So the final value now is simply, so 3 times 10 to the 5th times 8 divided by 20, and we get a value now of about 1. 1. 1.2 times, I guess, how many sig figs? 3. Okay, 1.20 times 10 raised to the 3, 4, 5, it looks like. And this is in terms of newtons per meter squared, like I said, or Pascal. All right, so this would be the answer for part A. <clears throat> so now let's take a look at part B. So part B says, uh, by what factor did the flow rate in the water main now increase in order to cause this decrease in delivered pressure? And it tells us that the pressure at the entrance of the water main is 5 times 10 to the 5th newtons per square meter, and the original flow rate was 200 liters per minute. So basically now, if we take a look at the original case over here, all right, um, we have the pressure in the water main being 5 times 10 to the 5 newtons per uh, square meter. And the flow rate through the water main now, as they told us, was originally 200 liters per minute. Okay, so I'm just going to write that in here. I'm going to write that 
200, 200 liters per minute. All right. Um, okay. And now, uh, let me just reread. Okay, so now there's going to be some change in the flow rate, right? That's actually what they're asking us. By what factor did the flow rate in the water main increase? So this value here, we don't know what it is, but we're trying to find out how much did this, we'll call this, remember, this is all initial, and these are the final values. So we're really trying to find the factor by which QF increased uh, by, okay? And hopefully this should make sense, right? If one house is, let's say, if, one, if only one house is drawing uh, water from a water main, right, we would imagine, okay, there's some flow. If two homes draw water from this water main, well, now the flow through the water main has gone up because now it has to supply two homes. And what happens if it has to supply three homes? Well, the flow in the water main would have gone up. And what happens if it supplies four? Well, the flow would have probably gone up as well. But now as the flow rate goes up, what do you think happens to the pressure to each of the homes? Well, if there's more flow, essentially flowing to other parts or other homes, there's less pressure being pushed on your house, essentially, right? So the, so the pressure should go down here. Now, how do we find this uh, ratio or this relationship? Well, now we have to be, since we're talking about all types of changes in pressure and whatever, uh, we now have to basically use delta P in terms of our calculations. All right. So one other thing here, I'm just going to, in terms of uh, plugging in the number, I just want to plug this in over here. So I'm going to erase that question mark. And now I'm going to plug in that it is equal to 1.20 times 10 to the fifth. All right. Newtons per meter squared. So now if I want to find um, the factor of the, uh, what factor did the flow rate in the water main increase, okay? So basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for Q, the Q of the water main, after there was some change, right? After, you know, when we went from the morning to the afternoon, there's going to be some change, there's going to be some increase, divided then by Q of the water main initially. And that should now equal, all else is constant, all the other resistance is constant, there's just going to be a difference in this pressure. Right, so we can now say P2 minus P1, and these are all final values, okay? Divided then by P2 minus P1, and these are both initials, okay? Now, it doesn't matter what, what place I call two and what place I call one, but I'm gonna want my answers to be positive. So it, it just in keeping the signs all nice, let's choose this, the beginning part, as our second point, okay? Or as point uh, two. Okay, and then let's choose uh, point one here to be the point, the location of the house. All right, so according to this formula, a certain flow rate happens when there is a pressure differential. Okay, no pressure differential, no flow, right? If P2 minus P1 is zero, what does this whole equation work out to be? Zippo, okay? So basically, without a pressure differential, there is no flow, all right? So again, I'm choosing this to be two and this to be point one. Again, similarly, I'm gonna choose this as location two in my final case, all right? And this is, equation, uh, and this is point one in my uh, final case as well. So the thing it doesn't say is that the pressure at the entrance of the water main is constant, but that we have to assume is the case. So there's some pressure being created here at the begin at the entrance to the water main. We're going to assume that this pressure is constant. All right. Now, if that's the case, I can now uh, start plugging in some values, right? So I know that my the pressure at point two in the final case, which is right here, is going to be five times ten to the five, and the final pressure at that first location is equal to what we just calculated over here, which is 1.20 times 10 to the fifth. That's all going to be divided by now. The pressure at location two in the initial case, that's right here, right at the entrance of the water main. Again, that's the same value, five times 10 to the fifth. And then subtracted from the pressure at the first location in the initial case. So that's the three times 10, 3.00 times 10 to the fifth. And look, lo and behold, we have our answer, right? So this would be the amount that the flow rate increases by. Okay, so let's calculate it. So there's gonna be five times 10 to the fifth minus 1.2 times 10 to the fifth, and then divide that down by in parentheses, five times 10 to the fifth minus three times 10 to the fifth. 
and we get a value of about 1.9. 1.9 uh, times, right? So now, that's the answer. Okay, that's the answer for letter B, 1.9 times. Uh, but now what might be useful is uh, in thinking about, I think, letter C here. Let's see. So how many more users are there assuming each would consume 20 liters per minute in the morning? So uh, let's do this. So let's try to find the final Q value here, okay, of when the demand for water goes up. So all I need to do is just reorganize this equation. And actually, I guess this is really part C. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase part A. So if you need to write it down, please write it down now. Or, well, you could just erase the video. Uh, not Well, not erase the video, but you, you can uh, rewind the video. So now let's, let's now do part C over here. Okay. So part C. Um, first thing is let's just find out what the flow rate is finally, okay, when there is more, more demand. So Q, W sub F will equal 1.9 times. Now all I'm, bringing, all I'm doing is bringing this up into the numerator, the Q uh, through the water main initially. Okay, and we know that initial value. They told us it was 200 liters per minute. So this is going to be equal to 1.9 times 200. All right, so Q through the water main in the final case or in the afternoon, right, is just going to be 1.9 multiplied by 200 and we get 380. So this is 300, 380, um, uh, 380, what were the units? Liters per minute they use, okay? Liters per minute. All right, great. So now let's think about this. Remember, okay, so this value right here is going to be uh, 380 liters per minute. So this is going to be 380 liters per minute. So remember, if no house calls for water, okay, and obviously this will be cut off somewhere, okay, if no house calls for water, what's the flow rate through the tube, through the main? Zero, right? Zero. There will be no flow. So if there's a flow through the water main, somebody's calling for water, okay? Now, it tells us initially here that there is a demand for water of 200 liters per minute in the morning. Now, if each user, they tell us, if each user consumes 20 liters per minute and the total flow rate through the main is 200 liters per minute, how many people are using it in the morning? If you said 10, you'd be right. Okay, so we can kind of we can we can kind of create an equation, right? We can say that this we can say that the. Uh, the flow rate through the main, okay, is going to be equal to, the I don't know why I, why did I choose W here? I'm just looking. Why did I say W? I, I think I meant to write M, just an upside down, uh, which, which is an upside down W or, okay, well, all of this should have been uh, Q of the water. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I'm just going to change the variable slightly because I want to make sure we're very specific. So here, the uh, the flow rate through the main, okay, will equal the flow rate to each house multiplied by the number of homes that are using the water. So we know that this is 200 in the morning. We know that each home is using 20 liters per minute. So just multiply that by the number of homes. And we realize that the number of homes using it in the morning is going to be, oops, is going to be 10. So number of homes would be 10. Okay, that's how, that's how many homes are using the water in the morning. So now let's take a look at what it looks like in terms of the water consumption in the afternoon. Now remember in the afternoon, the flow rate here has fallen. Okay, the flow rate to each home now is going to be eight liters per minute. Okay, how did we know that? Well, it told us that in the problem. And also it said 20 liters in the morning. I mean, they also told us that 20 liters per minute, that was basically the morning. Okay, so now what I realize is that uh, the flow rate has gone up. Okay, so the flow rate of um, each home, uh, excuse me, the flow rate through the water main has gone up. All right, and the uh, flow rate through each home has gone down. All right, so I can still use the same formula here to calculate my answer, meaning that we're going to take the uh, volume flow rate through the water main, that will equal the volume flow rate flowing to each home multiplied by the number of homes. So essentially this works out to be 380 and that will equal eight times than the number of homes that are using the facilities. So the number of homes now in terms of the afternoon would simply be 380 divided by eight. 
Now that comes out to 47 and a half, all right? So 47.5. So now, I don't know, what is it? You know, half a home is using water. I don't know if we should round this up or round it down. I don't really know. Uh, or maybe just one home, everybody's using, you know, a certain liter per minute value and somebody's using a little less. All right, I don't really know, but let's just use these numbers. So we have now here that the number of homes that are using it are approximately seven, uh, 47.5. So the question is now asking, remember, this is the morning and this is the afternoon. The question asks, how many more users are there? Meaning, how many more users are there in the afternoon when compared to the morning? So obviously, all you have to do is do a subtraction here, right? So when you do your subtraction, we're going to come out to about 37 0.5 homes. So 37.5 homes are now in excess of the morning, all right, are now using the water. So there you go. If you want to round that to 38, that's fine. If you want to say, well, how can a half a home be using water, all right, maybe round it down. I don't know. Somewhere around there should be the answer. Okay, guys. So hope this helped. Guys, please remember to subscribe. Appreciate it very much. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.